Thank you, Kyle. It's beautiful technology when it all works. Okay. All right. Um, whitehead deformity. You know, seen when uh, an overaggressive uh, hemorrhoidectomy is done. But there are situations like this one where there's 360 degree necrosis of the anoderm. So we have to debride all that, and then what do we do? Well, really, I mean, that's probably where you have to do a, a whitehead type procedure, although there are modifications where you use the external skin components and create anocutaneous flaps to prevent the deformity. This patient uh, was so gangrenous that uh, I didn't even have to look at the OR board to figure out what room he was in. Okay? I just f followed, followed the, the scent. Can external hemorrhoids bleed? <laughs> Only if somebody lances them first, okay? which is not an uncommon practice uh, in many ERs. Talk about uh, varying degrees of prolapse. That's just beautiful, okay? <laughs> well, there's a wide spectrum of rectal prolapse from uh, eccentric, concentric, mucosal, uh, all the way to full thickness, which can be small, modest, medium, large. This one is a harumba grade, okay? <laughs> and here's an example of multiple organ prolapse, excuse me, the cervix, as well as a very large rectal prolapse. Here you see basically all elements prolapsed, cystocele, rectocele, and a, a mucosal rectal prolapse. We can change gears a little bit to what we call appendageal pathology. This is uh, an annoying skin tag, an otherwise healthy female, no previous surgery. You can note that she has uh, a left anterolateral appendage. There is a raised non squamous center island. I don't know how you would know this, but you know, this is kind of like you have to do biopsy it. It's pemphigus vulgaris, an autoimmune affliction of the skin and mucous membranes, uh, causes unknown, can be life-threatening due to secondary sepsis. And uh, treatment is usually supportive uh, after you make the biopsy diagnosis. HIV-positive male, irritating bleeding appendage at the anal verge. 